Our daughter, Alexandra, had heard all her life until she was seven. She was uh, in first grade, and she had a disease that took her hearing. And that happened over a period of just uh, a day. Her hearing eventually got to the point where she was uh, profoundly deaf. To have your child be perfectly healthy, and then all of a sudden, in a matter of a week, she lost her hearing, we were devastated. We were on the hunt to talk with doctors and research. What can we do to get her back into a place that we would, she could thrive by herself? When she was not hearing, she was backing away from, from relationships and not wanting to engage like she normally did. She couldn't tell us anything. Like sometimes she meant to say like, how, how are you doing? And she said, blow, are you booing? It made me a little bit angry that kids would just give up so easy on talking to me because I'm, I'm trying. I, I really was trying. I, I wanted to be like them. We were getting more information about um, different options. We found that cochlear implants were very viable and it would give her a chance to hear. Alexandra's a special case because she had all the wiring in place. I see a little girl that's trying to be positive and upbeat and hopeful, but I see a lot of frustration. And I see someone that's really not a part of what is going on around her. And this is going to get her right back to where she was. She needs this now. When we started doing our research on different types of cochlear implants, and there are several different firms out there, some firms uh, are it's not as reliable, quite honestly. And we found that uh, the reliability of the cochlear products were far exceeded the rest. And you want something that is going to be reliable when she's in a college situation. And this is long term. We uh, waited several months to see if she might have some hearing improvement, but unfortunately she did not. And uh, she wondered when her first cochlear implant about six months after her onset of hearing loss. Dr. Kessel came out and said the surgery went great, and they turned it on, I think, three weeks after uh, it was implanted. And that was a, a glorious day. She looked over at us and heard right away. Are you hungry? I'm not hungry. No. And uh, that was, that was incredible. As I got into second grade, I had cochlear implants, and kids are like, oh, she's starting to hear better. With the success of the first cochlear implant, we wanted to maintain her auditory memory. And there's a certain time frame in there. So we started looking at the bilaterals. With two functioning implants, she will have a lot better understanding in noisy environments. Once she got both of her ears turned on, her brain remembered how it heard with both ears. Go. A mask, uh, a poop, a, a pancake, a, a, a spaghetti and meatballs. Wait a minute, how did you get that? I don't know, I just did. But two, it sounds like a normal person. It was amazing because then I could tell where the person who was talking to me was instead of going like, huh, are you, where are you? Are you behind me or something? All right, let's go over daily language here. We have two, first sentence to correct. A lot of kids forget that I have coconut implants because I'm hearing so well. All my teachers, whether the librarian or my regular class teacher, they, they act like I'm a regular student. And then we need the plural form of this singular noun, blueberry. All right, Allie. Um, you take out the Y and add I, yes. Why? Because um, before the Y, there's an R and that's a consonant. Okay, and when it's a vowel in the Y? You just add S. Okay, there we go. And? I didn't worry about where I put Alexandra in the classroom as far as seating. Used correctly. She's an above average student, but I would say she's um, 
a very typical 10, 11 year old. I knew Allie after she lost her hearing, but before she had her wonderful implant. So that when she was trying to function within the normal classroom, we were having to make special accommodations for Allie. To Kmart, on the road to Kmart. And now we don't have to do any of that. Officer Kelly brought um, the kids to the headquarters instead of Kmart because the, a tornado is on the road to Kmart. Excellent. Two points for that team. OK, here's the pressure, guys. I think she's doing phenomenally. I'm very proud of her. I checked out a book from the library called The Once and Future King about King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Recently, Alexander was upgraded to the Nucleus 5. And follow the king, then follow me. When I got my Nucleus 5 and I compared it with my old implant, it was smaller and much thinner. And when I put it on, words like different, it was like instead of different, um, it was like different. And I could hear the team was sharper and clear and it was normal. I wonder how Mr. Samson and his knights ended up with a sword if the lady took it. She doesn't even know it's there. And most of the time, nobody else does either. This new device was backwards compatible and we don't have to go back and do a, another surgery to have a new device implanted. Hi. Alexandra enjoys the Nucleus 5's remote. She uses it when she uses the phone. She can just switch it right over with ease without having to take her implant off. She can also switch her programs, which one she wants to be in at just a button. So am I doing it right, Douglas? Um, well, Cochlear was a company that was kind of like an extended family to me. They quickly um, would answer my questions, and, and they didn't make me feel like they were silly questions. Oops. <laughs> we still needed more answers on how best can we make this equipment work for our daughter. And they really were there for us. We found that the product is very, very reliable. This is something she's going to have for the rest of her life. I play soccer with my implants on. They don't fall off because they're pretty secure on my head. It doesn't really matter what position I'm in, I can still hear the coach from across the field. With the new Nucleus 5, the world has opened up to her again. She can do anything she wants. The interesting thing about Alexandra is that she does not identify herself as a deaf person. Even though Alexander is a profoundly deaf individual and will be for the rest of her life, we see no limitations. With these cochlear implants, there's challenges, but on a daily basis, you don't even notice them. She's back to Alexandra. The gift of the cochlear implants is that she can choose her career path and where she wants to go in her life. I feel very lucky to be able to hear again. <laughs>